you everybody for coming to the Aaron Torres podcast YouTube page. If you could do me a quick favor, see that little subscribe button at the bottom of your screen, go ahead, click that subscribe button really does help our channel grow our audience grow. And I really do appreciate it more than, you know, so click that subscribe button, appreciate your support. Now here's the video that you came here for. And I do want to continue the conversation on the biggest topic in all of college football. That is of course, what the heck is going on at Texas A&M. And if you've, been, if you've been plugged in to the Aaron Torres pod or the YouTube channel, you know, we spent a lot of time on Sunday into Monday talking about all this. Okay. We spent Sunday. We did a kind of an early reaction when the news became official shockingly on Sunday morning. And then by Sunday night, we kind of turned our attention to the coaching candidates. Who's realistic, who isn't, who's going to get the job, all that good stuff. And so I bring it up because those are the conversations that I think everybody wants to have the, the, the fans, the people in other sec school, uh, other sec cities, et cetera. But what I will tell you is this, as I spent the last couple of days on the phones, talking to people super plugged in to college football, other just people in the space, there is a much bigger or maybe not bigger, but certainly more interesting conversation that is happening. One that I don't think is getting talked about enough right now, this second by fans, that conversation, what the heck is about to happen to all the talent that was supposed to be on Texas A&M's roster for the 2024 season? Because remember, that 2022 recruiting class that by statistics and the 24 seven algorithm is the greatest recruiting class of all time. Those guys are not draft eligible yet. They're all going to be playing college football next year. So they can all enter the portal. Texas A&M signed another really good recruiting class in 2023, although it was a little bit smaller. And Oh, by the way, in 2024, they have a top 10 class as well. And so that is the conversation. I think everybody in football is having how many of these guys hit the portal how many of the recruits end up at AM? And are we about to see what is essentially the greatest talent exodus, the greatest college football free agency that we have ever seen? Because if Texas AM screws this up, we very well just might. And a little bit of backstory. Let me let me even start by saying this. This was a lot of the reason why I didn't think Jimbo Fisher was getting fired this year. Like we did an update a week ago and there were more reports, more speculation that maybe something could happen if things got sideways these last few weeks. And I said, look, and, you know, I talked to people and all that, but I said, look, I, you know, I just think you fire him now, you risk losing so much talent. And so my hunch from talking to people in Aggieland was they're going to give them next year just because they don't want to lose all these guys. And so when a lot of them go to the NFL, when, when it's time to turn the page on that 2022 recruiting class, if he still hasn't delivered, then that's when you go ahead and replace him. So that is part of what made Sunday sh so shocking. But I also do give Texas A&M and their administration a little bit of credit. Clearly behind the scenes, this was a decision that they decided to make. We can argue, should they have done it now? Should they have waited till after next season? That, that's independent. It's not my $77 million to throw around. Somebody decided that a change needed to be made. The money was collected, all that good stuff. And so I bring it up because once that decision is made, that he is not going to be your coach in 2024, excuse me, I actually like that the decision was made now. Because what is important now for Texas A&M is what we talked about on Sunday. What is important now is making sure that whoever that next head coach is, whether it's the biggest name in the world or somebody that we don't even think is on Texas A&M's radar, the most important thing that you need to do if you're Texas A&M, figure out who is legitimate as a candidate, who is not, who could take the coaching job, who will not, because I believe you have to have somebody on campus accepting that job, putting on a hat and saying, gig them and meeting with your recruit for your current players, re-recruiting them. And then your 2024 recruits that has to happen two Sundays from now when the season ends against LSU. And so to me, I do give Texas A&M credit. Don't wait till the end of the season. If you know, this is what you're going to do, do it now, start the process. And then I also give them credit for something else, which I think was a little bit important, maybe lost under the radar on Monday. On Monday, or maybe it was even late Sunday, uh, Elijah Robinson was named the interim head coach, uh, obviously for the end of the season. And what's interesting about that, think about Texas A&M. They have, I believe, three former head coaches on their staff. Bobby Petrino is their offensive coordinator. D DJ Durkin's their defensive coordinator. I believe Steve Adazio is on that staff as offensive line coach or something. So to name the defensive line coach Elijah Robinson uh, uh, interim head coach, 
Remember, he is not just a defensive line coach. He is also the recruiting coordinator. And I think that's a smart move. And Texas A&M doesn't get credit for a lot. So let's give him credit for that. If you are going to fire Jimbo, they did it at the right time. And I think they named the right guy, the head coach. Recruiting coordinator, relationship guy. He is a guy that's been in so many of those kids' homes, has relationships with him. And at the very least, what he's going to do, he's going to keep them in the building for the next two weeks until the next head coach is named. So we'll see what happens. But as I said, Texas A&M needs to get somebody in place ASAP because if they don't, if they wait until after the season and they drag their feet and they're still trying to figure it out, we could, as I said, see the greatest town exodus that we've ever seen. The amount of talent that is projected to be on that 2024 roster between guys currently on the roster and that 2024 recruiting class is insane, okay? Went, went ahead and did a little research before this segment. This is how this is the insanity of the talent on this roster, okay? So last year, okay, so we'll get to the 2024 recruit 2022 recruiting class to say, but last year they only signed 19 players. Remember, they took about 30 the year before. They only signed 19 players the year before. It's still ranked as the 15th ranked recruiting class in the country. And most importantly, of the 19 players, five were in the top 101 players nationally, according to 24 seven sports. So you essentially have five, uh, five of the top 100 players in a 19 person class. A quarter of the class was top 100 players. Ruben Owens, the star running back who's had a, who's shown a ton of flashes this year. Um, obviously outside of him, you had some other big names in that class, David Hicks, a five-star. And then beyond that 2023 class, you go back to 2022. I mean, that is, it's still, it's just an insane recruiting class to look at on paper and what's crazy is a lot of those guys are producing right now. In total, that 22, 2022 recruiting class, and, and I know some of those guys have left and transferred, and frankly, maybe it was to the betterment of the program. But overall, I mean, it still boggles my mind. That 2022 recruiting class had 18 of the top 100 players overall. So of the top 100 players in the country, essentially one out of five signed with Texas A&M. Beyond that, they also had eight Five stars. I think there were 32 five stars that year. They had eight of them, meaning eight of the top 32 players. One of the, one of the top four, one of every four five stars that year went to Texas A&M. So it is insane. The talent on that roster, again, some of them left, but a lot of them are still there. And a lot of them are contributing at a high, high level. Walter Nolan has turned into an elite defensive line prospect. Obviously, there's some older players that are draft eligible. The Shamar Turners, who is part of the 2021 class, Edgerin Cooper, um, a lot of these guys still have eligibility beyond this season on the offensive side. Evan Stewart has become a star when they can actually get him the ball. Ruben Owens, I just mentioned has looked awesome. Le'Veon Moss has had his moments at running back. He was part of the 2022 class defensively. So many of those guys are just starting to come into their own Jared Kerr, Jacoby Matthews in the defensive backfield Kerr's a linebacker, excuse me, Jacoby Matthews in the defensive backfield. Um, you go on and on so many talented players. That could be available if you are not careful. And it's kind of crazy, right? Because you go ahead and look at, you go on social media and you search a, say, an Evan Stewart. And I'm not speculating. I, one thing I will not do, and if you came here for this, I apologize, but I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to start speculating on who I think will transfer. I don't think that's fair to a kid, to his family, to the school, to Texas A&M. I'm not going to do that. What I will say, though, go ahead, go on social media and search an Evan Stewart. You know what it's all is? It's all Texas fans saying, hey, you almost chose us coming out of high school. Why don't you come here? Uh, Walter Nolan, search his name. You know what it is? He's from Tennessee originally. It's Tennessee fans saying, Walter, come home for your final year of college football. Uh, you know, Jacoby Matthews is from Louisiana. Come back, Jacoby, come back. So it is crazy. And, and obviously, look, the recruiting has started behind the scenes. This is something you don't need me to tell you. But everybody has an NIL agent now. Everybody has a point of contact. Maybe it's a high school coach. Maybe it's a seven-on-seven -seven coach. Maybe it's that agent. Maybe it's a parent. But we know that the contacts have probably been going on long before Jimbo Fisher actually got fired and certainly have been going on since. And so this is why it's so important to get your next head coach in place. And let me wrap by saying this. It's important to get your next head coach in place to hold that 2024 class together as well. They've actually lost a few recruits even before Jimbo Fisher's firing, but that is still an elite class, top 10 class in the country. Cam Coleman, five-star from Alabama. Uh, uh, um, Terry Bussey, Five star from the Houston area or from the the, the Texas A and M area. By the way, I heard a story. Terry Bussey was on campus, set to meet with the coaching staff when everybody got news that Jimbo Fisher was fired. So you talk about chaos. 
these are some of the guys that could potentially become available and that the next head coach needs to re-recruit. Dominic McKinley, a five-star from Lafayette, Louisiana, defensive lineman. So we'll see what happens. Camp Coleman, by the way, another one. Uh, you know, you go on social media now. He's from Alabama. It's all Auburn fans saying he almost chose us the first time. Come back home. Let's make this happen. So I could go on and on. And we will. When some of these guys hit the portal, when some of these guys decommit, we're, we're going to discuss it on this channel because this is the fascinating time of the year in college football. I say it all the time. We all love the games on the field, but we all love the gossip off the field. I call it the chisme. In Spanish, it's called chisme. It's the gossip. Well, this is it because we're going to have a lot of speculation on who the next head coach is, who's going to be part of that staff, but most importantly, what players will be back and what players won't. But to wrap, I will say what I said a few minutes ago. Texas A&M, Jimbo Fisher, make sure, make sure, make sure, well, not Jimbo Fisher, but Texas a and Make sure you have your next head coach in place two weeks from now, the day that season ends. Have your guy in place. It's the only way you're going to retain this roster. This roster. If you enjoy this video, do me a quick favor. Make sure to subscribe to the Aaron Torres Pod YouTube channel. Also, you can get the new episodes of the Aaron Torres Podcast every Monday, Wednesday, Friday, wherever you download podcasts.